343 addresses fan feedback, talking about the age of the demo build that we saw, the lack of some fan favorite weapons in Halo Infinite, and possibly Halo Infinite's multiplayer being free to play? Well, the source says just that, so stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these news, informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button so it lets me know you want to see some more content like this. Helps more people get a chance to see this video so they can stay up to date with everything going on with Halo. And if you want to stay up to date with Halo going into Halo Infinite, Make sure you tap subscribe to keep yourselves updated. So let's get right into the information here. So we had two major news drops recently just dropped for us guys. We had the community update from Unishek and a leaked kind of pre-announcement thing that happened online that at the moment of making this video, it's still up there. Hasn't been changed, taken down or disputed by 343. So I'm taking this as legitimate. So let's start off with the community update. So normally these community updates are just kind of like a roundup of all the information that recently happened with Halo. But sometimes they go into a little bit of extra information, and this time they did. Unishek went online and you know checked out Twitter, you checked out Reddit, you checked out the Halo Waypoint forums to kind of get a sense of feedback from what people were saying about the uh, the gameplay demo. Which certainly the last uh, week there has been a lot of talk over this demo. There's been a lot of praise, and there's been a lot of uh, concerns being brought up as well. And Unishek tries to give more information on these. Not trying to quell your thoughts or feelings, but just kind of give them a little bit more information of understanding and where they're coming from in this whole situation. So I'm going to kind of read through this because I want to twist his words in any way. Uh, so it might be a little reading, but it's going to be very well worth the knowledge. So first we just jump right into questions about the graphics and visuals. First, I want to acknowledge that yes, we've heard the feedback coming from parts of the community regarding the visuals in the Halo Infinite campaign demo. While we see and hear far more positive than negative, we do want to share a bit more context. From our perspective, there are two key areas being debated around the community, overall art style and visual fidelity. Based on our learnings from Halo 4, Halo 5, and Halo Wars 2, along with strong community feedback, we decided to shift back towards the legacy aesthetics that defined the original trilogy. With Halo Infinite, we're returning to a more classic art style, which has a key message going back to the very first reveal that garnered enthusiastic and positive responses. This translates to a more vibrant palette, cleaner models and objects with less noise. While we appreciate this may not be everyone's personal preference, we stand by our decision and we're happy to see it resonate with so many fans around the world. The second theme being discussed involving visual fidelity. Negative feedback in this area includes comments around characters, and objects appearing flat, simplistic, and plastic-like, lighting feeling dull and flat, and object pop-in. We've read your comments, we've seen the homemade examples of retouching content, and yes, we've heard the digital foundry assessment. In many ways, we are in agreement here. We do have work to do to address some of these areas and raise the level of fidelity and overall presentation for the final game. The build used to run the campaign demo was work in progress from several weeks ago, with a variety of graphical elements and game systems still being finished and polished. While some of the feedback was expected and speaks to areas already in progress. Other aspects of the feedback we have brought new opportunities and considerations to light that the team is taking very seriously and working to assess. We don't have firm answers or outcomes to share yet, but the team is working as quickly as possible on plans to address some of the feedback around detail, clarity, and overall fidelity. The team is committed and focused on making sure we have a beautiful world for players to explore when we launch. So yeah guys, that does help quell some concerns or some rumors that we heard about the demo build and how old that demo is. A lot of people were saying it was a year old. Some people were saying it was from January. That was a, prop that was a very popular one. My assumption is that no, this was probably finalized a couple weeks ago and it seemed just that uh, several weeks ago is the exact quote Now they don't put an exact date they use weeks instead of months so I'm saying 
three, maybe four, five weeks old, something like that. So this is what the game looks like, guys. I do appreciate that Unishek did go into detail but talking about how they've seen, you know, the touches of in Photoshop that we've seen tw uh, shared around Twitter, which have been some great additions, some great feedback right there. Digital Foundry's video, if you haven't watched it, it is a much watch because it gives you much more context of how lighting works, especially with Halo Infinite being a dynamic lighting system rather than our previous static lighting system that we've seen in all the other Halo games before this. So in this post, they do a great job of saying, we see you, we hear you, and we're working on it, which is kind of what I was expecting after this demo that after seeing this and hearing our feedback, because 343 has been doing a much better job of communicating with our fans and the fan base than ever before. And uh, you know that 343 is probably going to put extra effort into making sure the game looks better and maybe finishing up some more minor details of the gameplay or some other aspects of the world. There's uh, you know, plus or minuses to this whole situation. I think the game looks fine. Uh, obviously not the best. There definitely needs to be improvements to it before release. And I'm sure we'll get that, especially with like the popping grass and uh, geometry and clouds and probably just overall lighting as well. We'll probably see a bit of improvement there. Uh, but it's like overall the game look, it does look pretty good. Uh, I'm excited because it's all dynamic lighting. So it's gonna have a day night cycle. The world is gonna be gigantic. Also keep in mind that post launch there's gonna be an RTX ray tracing patch coming to Halo Infinite. So this is gonna really help out a lot of the issues with the lighting. So keep that in mind. Now, there's been a lot of questions about the external characters surrounding this game, which potentially could happen. Uh, they mentioned about Cortana the created blue team, fire team Osiris, Lasky, UNSC Infinity, Halsey, Arbiter, Atrox, and what is the Harbinger? And essentially what they say is, don't worry, a lot of your questions about all these things are going to be answered in the game, which honestly is fine. And, you know, these are kind of all external things that we care about, and we definitely don't want that kind of stuff spoiled, especially story details, and we want to know everything obviously, because we're all very excited, we're all very eager. But we also want, when we play the game, to have it be a fresh experience that we weren't expecting. That's why I'm highly anticipating the Flood to be in Halo Infinite, but we're never gonna get that confirmed before release because we want that to be a surprise. Also, just for clarity, how do you pronounce the big bad guy's name? It's Escher, um, Eshera. That's how you pronounce it. There have also been some rumors going around about being able to play this campaign demo as I guess apparently there was some kind of confirmed offering from Xbox about being able to play these demos before release. And Unishake says, yes, you'll be able to play exactly what was played in the demo when the game releases. What a troll. They also go into uh, beta testing flights for Halo Infinite as they were promised previously, kind of retailing about how they're kind of in the area if they can or can't do it. I made an entire video on it, linked in the description down below if you guys want to watch that. They also confirmed that campaign will support two player split screen and online four player co-op. Nothing about multiplayer, but I'm assuming that multiplayer will probably also be two screen if not maybe not even be able to split screen. That's kind of for debate. I'm sure we'll know more once we have a multiplayer reveal. This one does kind of hit pretty hard. This is confirmed information about our loved Magnum and our loved shotgun from the Halo franchise. And it looks like from what we've read in this post saying that the classic Magnum and the tactical shotgun aren't currently featured in Halo Infinite. That one, it, it hits, it hits right here. It hits pretty hard on that one. Yeah, it, that one hits pretty hard. Yeah, no, no classic Magnum, no classic shotgun. Uh, I mean, I definitely prefer those over what we got right now. Though I say the shotgun that we have in this game does look pretty cool. I'm all for shooting it. Missing the Magnum does hurt. Does that mean we won't see a comeback in Halo Infinite? I would say that'd be a hard no. I think eventually we will get the tag, the classic Magnum and the tactical shotgun in the game. At what point, we don't know, probably post-launch and probably some season pass model or something. I'm just kind of speculating on that. Uh, but I would be very surprised over the 10 year history of Infinite that's you know planned to be, uh, I'd be very surprised if we never get the Magnum or never get the tactical shotgun. And lastly, the last part I wanna talk about is Halo Infinite's multiplayer. And yes, I did recently just release an everything we know video about it, which was everything we knew about that up to that point. This is not confirmed, but it hasn't been denied yet that Halo Infinite's multiplayer is free to play. On the European website, Smith's Toys goes has a nice little webpage talking about the Xbox Series X, registered to get like a free whatever kind of thing whatever you know just kind of get early access and all that kind of stuff they mention all the games and they mention halo infinite here specifically it's one of the first things they mention and they say here 
The legendary Halo series returns with the most expansive Master Chief campaign yet and groundbreaking free-to-play multiplayer experience. Enjoy up to 120 frames and greatly reduced load times creating seamless gameplay with Xbox Series X. Now we haven't had any information about multiplayer formats at all. Like we haven't heard any true uh, microtransactions. They did confirm that there are no paid loot boxes in uh, Halo Infinite, which is very specific to say, which definitely leaves the door open for other things for sure. So definitely will be microtransactions. If we do know, there was a job posting a while ago asking for Halo Infinite microtransaction uh, integration with the game. So there's definitely going to be microtransactions. To what level? We don't know. If it's free to play multiplayer, this is going to be absolutely huge. Multiplayer is the place where you can monetize games pretty easily and with not a lot of community backlash. Now, we, come on, we had to confirm that we're, there were going to be microtransactions because it's a modern game. This game is a game as a platform, going to be around here for 10 years. Uh, I would assume they have some extra revenue coming in from just the initial sales of the game. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Free to play does kind of worry me a little bit when it comes to the monetization of it, especially on PC, but also on the console as well of uh, bringing in, well, hackers. Right now with Call of Duty Warzone, there's a big issue with hacking at, because it's a free to play game. You can ban their accounts all you want, yes, but then they'll just make a new account and then uh, hack again. Like it's, once you get to the higher levels of uh, the free to play uh, Warzone, yeah, it's, I've heard it's pretty awful, almost unplayable, and uh, Activision hasn't really done much, so a good anti-cheat, especially on the PC side of things, is really going to be needed for to keep the uh, sanctity and the high quality multiplayer that we've always experienced with uh, Halo intact. So yeah, that's a lot of info guys, but there was a lot of news just dropped just last night. So I'm gonna give it to you guys all in one big video. Hopefully the timestamps helped out with this one as well. If you like this informational video, please make sure to tap that like button. Let's me know if you want to see some more content like this. Check out the videos on the screen over here if you miss any content from me. I've been uploading videos like a madman ever since this reveal. And if you missed any videos, check out the videos on the screen right here to a link to all my news and informational videos. You've been on the loop for the last few days or so. I haven't caught everything. So thank you so much for watching guys. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.